Cześć! Parę dni temu miałem przyjemność uczestniczyć w wydarzeniu projektu Kosmos, który to niedawno odpalił swój mainnet. Kosmos, podobnie jak Aeon, zajmuje się tematyką interoperability i skalowalności blockchainów, więc mam go na radarze. Jest to również interesujący projekt. No i co? Zapraszam Was na krótką relację. czasu śledzę tematykę interoperacyjności blockchainów, czyli komunikacji między różnymi blockchainami. E, przyglądam się różnym projektom, wspominałem bardzo dużo o Ionie. E, przy tej okazji też e, tam pojawiło się wspomnienie Kosmosu jako konkurencji. E, Kosmos jest to projekt, e, który robi rzeczy bardzo podobne do Iona. E, niedawno, parę dni temu odpalili swój e, mainnet. E, no i przy tej okazji miałem przyjemność wzięcia udziału w, w takim wydarzeniu inauguracyjnym e, właśnie po odpaleniu tego mainnetu. Bardzo fajne wydarzenie, bardzo fajny projekt, świetny zespół. No, widzę dużą przyszłość w tych rozwiązaniach łączących blockchainy. Tak jak wspominałem w moich filmach, myślę, że nie będzie jednego blockchaina, który jakby przejmie wszystko, raczej będzie potrzeba, żeby ktoś to połączył. Być może Eon, być może Kosmos, być może jeszcze ktoś inny się, się wyłoni. Na pewno te, te dwa projekty robią kawał dobrej roboty. No, w każdym razie Kosmos o symbolu Atom, w związku z tym, że odpalił Mainnet, wypuścił na giełdy w końcu swój ten coin Atom. On, on dosyć jak na rynek niedźwiedzia dosyć ładnie zadebiutował, no bo cena ICO była chyba 10 centów, zadebiutował gdzieś tam w granicach 7 dolarów, więc 70 razy wyżej niż, niż cena jakby z ICO. No ale nie o tym chciałem mówić. Sam projekt jest naprawdę bardzo ciekawy. Myślę, że, że ma szansę zdobyć swój jakiś tam market share. Być może ma w jakiejś współpracy z Ionem na jakimś etapie udaje mi się coś tam wspólnie zadziałać. Projekt mimo już tyle co odpalił swój, swój mainnet niedawno, no to już ma jakieś ślady adopcji. Ja pewnie nadam o tym jakiś osobny odcinek, jak przygotuję odpowiednie materiały. Natomiast no, mają całkiem już dużo i partnerstw i rozwiązań w budowie. Więc zachęcam Was, śledźcie te projekty, których być może jeszcze inni nie śledzą, te, które coś zdołały zbudować przez te ostatnie kilka lat, które być może nie są jeszcze w pierwszej dziesiątce, w pierwszej setce market capu, no ale tak jak właśnie Kosmos, tak jak Atom wskakują nagle gdzieś tam, jak Philips Konopi pojawiają się nie wiadomo skąd, no to są projekty, które nie wypuściły na przykład swoich tokenów, swoich coinów, nie mając gotowego rozwiązania. Myślę, że, że to jest, są w ogóle sprytne zagrania ze strony takich projektów, no bo wypuszczając tokeny czy coiny, niby utility, ale nie mając gotowego mainnetu, jak można mówić o jakimkolwiek utility. Narażamy się na to, że, że taki token zostanie posądzony o to, że jest security, a nie utility, no jakby szereg konsekwencji związanych z karami, konwersjami, być może nawet likwidacją takiego projektu w rezultacie. Więc, więc takich projektów, że tak powiem, gdzieś tam w ukryciu budujących jest, jest sporo. No i zgłębiajcie to. Kosmos komunikuje blockchainy, pozwala je skalować, ma fajny zespół, ma myślę, że dosyć mocne wsparcie różnych venture capitalist w tle, więc myślę, że, że, że takie projekty będą, będą zdobywały swój market share. Jeżeli chodzi o interoperability, ja widzę no, kilku mocnych graczy, takich, którzy, którzy próbują to zrobić w sposób zdecentralizowany. Cosmos, Aeon, Polkadot. No, są jeszcze takie rozwiązania typu mainframe, czy no czy choćby kwant, ale, ale to są bardziej powiedzmy oni tworzą taki system operacyjny, niekoniecznie jakby sam blockchain tworzą, więc najlepsze rozwiązania się budowały, budują i będą się rodziły. Uważam, że Kosmos jest jednym z nich. Zgłębcie dalej ten projekt. W tym filmie w zasadzie znajdziecie troszeczkę takich no, wglądów zespół i w to w jak nieformalnej atmosferze działają. Zapraszam.
Kosmos ostatnio dostarczył parę fajnych rzeczy. No i taki, e, takie otwarcie, imprezy na otwarcie właśnie sobie zorganizowali. E, wygląda to bardzo fajnie, udało mi się znaleźć jakieś e, przebranie. E, za chwilę będzie część e, oficjalna, jakieś przemówienie członków zespołu na temat tego, e, jak dowozili przez ostatnie dwa lata, a potem jakaś integracja, networking. E, zapowiadać naprawdę fajna impreza. Więźniowie, kosmici, policjanci, wszyscy tu przybyli, żeby zobaczyć Cosmos Mainer Lounge. So, so we all have to vote in a decentralized fashion on who wins the costume. So I'm just going to hand it over quickly so the team can introduce themselves if you don't know them. And then we'll get to the questions, yeah? Hi, I'm Alessio. Hello. Hi everybody, my name is Anton, I work at on Thunderman. <laughs> Hello, I'm working in Cosmos, and my name is June. Hi, I'm Federico, I work the Boyer project. Uh, formerly Boyer, now Cosmos project. <laughs> hey, I'm Ismail, I work on Tenem Core. Uh, thanks for organizing this. You'll notice how we scheduled the launch party a week and a half after the actual launch. In case it went wrong, then we can fix it. But now we can stand up, all, stand up here. The reason we can stand up here is because it's been smooth so far. I'm Chris. I work on the SDK, the Energy Protocol. Thanks for coming. Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm working on Cosmos Wallet. Thanks for seeing it. <laughs> and SDK, let's say. Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Pucci, I work on uh, the documentation mini and some Debra stuff as well, and I've been at uh, for a year and a half now, and uh, yeah, I'm happy we launched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pavel, I'm also working on the wallet, and it's amazing that you guys are here. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Sunny, uh, I work on, I've been working on Cosmos for about a year and a half, I work mostly on the Cosmos SDK and on the research side, and I also run a validator called Sika. So. <laughs> Zero percent <laughs> commission. Zero percent commission. Zero. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit about what you were most surprised about. What was like your favorite moment uh, or the most surprising moment gearing up to lunch or at lunch? At lunch, I made a bet an hour before the Cosmos Hub launch that. One validator would be slashed for equivocation, and three validators would be slashed for downtime. And I was wrong on all counts. I was too pessimistic. No validators have been slashed so far. So here's to you. Just yell. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So I think uh, it's been a, a long way in the in the making. So I would be curious to to hear about the. Uh, key learning experiences uh, in this, uh, I think especially the, the whole decentralization aspect of the development team is interesting. Have you learned something about uh, how to organize development uh, this manner? I think we've learned lots of things and some things we still haven't uh, learned quite how to do perfectly yet, but we're definitely making progress. One thing uh, I think we've learned is that it helps a lot to specify protocols in detail and come to consensus on all of the particulars of the high-level algorithms requirements before we implement them. We saw that with the second iteration of fee distribution, which was really well specified before it was implemented, and thus will lead to be implemented in one pass. And we're trying to take that same approach with the interchain uh, protocol. Mm. If you're a company focused on building a CFD consensus engine, and Interoperable blockchain. Don't spend six months writing a new encoding library. Okay, so by the way, thanks a lot for the Cosmos team. I've been following. Uh, I'm 10 years in the blockchain space, so it's really interesting to see this. 
A great team coming with an idea. Did you say 10 years in the bottom? I think 10 years in the bottom. Satoshi. Are you Satoshi? Satoshi, he we have new. We need him. We got him. So they're thinking about the very like the old school Bitcoiner, right? Maximalism. So, anyways, after a lot of issues came up with the community and, and a lot of, uh, to be honest, your views on environmentalism, I think are really important. Is so far it relates to BFP consensus versus proof of work, and I think this is a major sticking uh, point for uh, a lot of people in the industry. Were you at all, was this a major driver behind the BFP from the, for Jay and the team? And what response did you see from the community as you kind of, you know, there was three kind of camps that were forming around that time when there was a lot of differentiation around. What was the next step forwards for blockchain? And how did you guys see it? Um, yeah, I guess I, I, maybe not exactly on the question, but this is one of the questions we wanted to, um, to take on, which is what, like, now that Cosmos has launched, what is, what does it mean for the overall blockchain ecosystem, right? What's different? Uh, I think the, the point I really want to highlight is that this is the first ever BFT prospect system in production. Uh, of course, it, it has only run for a while, but uh, <laughs> if it continues to run, and I hope it will, um, it will be a testimony that you can now build uh, proof of stake, scalable, sustainable blockchains uh, very easily using the SDK and Tenem Core. Um, and yeah, this is, a, I think, an incredible achievement. Uh, this means that now we have a living proof that you can build secure BFT system at scale that work on the public internet. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to try the possibilities of the shop. Cosmos in the future, like now that we've launched and we've been making blocks for about a week, what do you see next for Cosmos? I'd like to see us continue to make blocks at approximately the same rate, maybe even a slightly faster rate. I hope that in those blocks will come to be many transactions uh, representing different things and will be able uh, the inter inter blockchain communication protocol, the hub from start to become uh, you know, a sync in an ecosystem of many blockchains interacting with each other in uh, complex configurations I'm sure we cannot begin to imagine. Um, personally, I'm especially interested in a decentralized finance application uh, because I think Cosmos is actually one of the best platforms uh, for building such applications. Um, I'll probably write a blog post soon about that, but basically with the instant finality property of Tenamint, uh, the fact that it's safety powering, uh, the fact that we're going to have like inter blockchain communication with IDC, um, the fact that it's sustainable, that you can build both private and public blockchain, I guess, then speak with each other, uh, the fact that all blockchains can be sovereign, uh, later we'll have other uh, models of like um, uh, hosting your chain maybe on, on top of the hub or other hubs. Uh, but for now, you can be totally sovereign and still be able to interact with other chains. So I think all these points, we also have the, the Cosmos SDK in GoLang, which is a, a very like, non-natural language with very simple graphic libraries. Um, so all of these, for me, uh, means that you can now uh, confidently build a uh, decentralized finance application that will hold significant value uh, and be very secure. So. Yeah, I'm really excited for these applications, and I think the, the fact that Binance and Terra and other decentralized finance applications are starting to move to, to Cosmos is a great testimony to that. Will the Cosmos Hub's proof of stake consensus be decentralized enough? Yeah, so uh, to clarify, Sunny and I are representing different sides of this debate to give you some perspective on what we think are the best arguments. They may not necessarily be our personal opinions of the evening. Cosmos Hub proof of state consensus is the first BFT proof of state consensus that has ever launched into the wild. It is necessarily experimental. But when constructing that consensus and that state machine algorithm to allocate state between validators and delegators, we have put in many ways for the system to adapt to an unpredictable external world. All we can do is write an internal system. We can write in logic and code to govern 
how validators vote, to govern who gets what kind of voting power, to govern who can delegate, and to govern when they can change the delegation. But we can write that logic in a way that permits a lot of flexibility on the people who actually hold the stake. The stakeholders of the system can act in its best interests, understanding the world outside in a way that we can never predict what design might So that's why we've built in a lot of different controls, a lot of levers that stakeholders can tweak to adjust the parameters of the system according to what they see happening. They can redelegate to different validators. They can, uh, you know, validators who equivocate will be slashed. Possible faults that put the protocol at risk will be punished. Delegators can see this, it's transparent. We've allowed for a high amount of liquidity of stake within the system. So you can instantly redelegate your stake to another validator if you decide the validator you delegated to isn't doing a good job or is likely to put the system at risk. Um, the system can react very quickly, and everyone using the system can pay attention and ensure that this happens. So, why would a uh you know, I'm just going to go into the back and forth. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so, you know, why would governance, like, you know, the, right now in the system, it's the coin holder based governance. And it's like, if they're the, if the largest coin holders are the ones who are, like, you know, benefiting from centralization, I don't see why that would help them. Why they would want to increase the decentralization of the system when they profit from it. Uh, perhaps some people will have short term interests, but. Uh, many delegators and validators will necessarily have stake locked up. They can't simply uh, outsort their positions and vote against the best interests of the cosmos. Moreover, there's always the threat of a fork. If I submit a proposal to, uh, you know, maybe privilege my interests of a validator over the best long-term interests of the network, someone else can set up a credible threat to split the network, and that will force my proposal to fail. Okay, question: How decentralized do you think it has to be? How much is it done? Like. If the current distribution of state and of voting power are about it, is that fine? It's hard to tell. The current Gini coefficient of Cosmos voting power is about 0.79. Which is, which is and already what, what is less. the Gini coefficient of, uh, of, of the Bitcoin mining pools? Uh, Bitcoin mining uh, pools are about half. But the Ethereum mining pools are 0.85. So the Cosmos hub is already more decentralized yeah, than but like, Ethereum. But Bitcoin mining pools are way bigger industry than Ethereum mining pools. Obie strony debatują na tematy związane jakby z przyszłością kosmosu, blockchaina. Wydaje mi się, że bardzo, bardzo fajnie zorganizowane wydarzenie. Na pewno integracyjnie, na pewno inspirująco, na pewno na luzie, bez jakiejś pompy sztucznej. Więc cieszę się, że tu wpadliśmy. No i zobaczymy. Życzę kosmosowi wszystkiego najlepszego. Orel, did you take your costume off? Or is your costume